In this lecture, we are going to see how to perform bulk upload using Customer 360 application. In order to perform the bulk upload, we first have to create a document or the spreadsheet file. There are two types of documents supported. One is Excel spreadsheet and other is CSV file. In this demo, we are going to use Excel spreadsheet in order to perform bulk upload of data. We have already prepared some sample data here with a few columns. The column names such as account name, first name, last name, etc. These are the given name and we do not have to bind this column name with any business entity name or any column names. You can give any name to these columns. At a runtime, these columns will be detected as a source column and will be mapped to the target column dynamically so we don't have to worry about the column name and its a definition once we prepare this data the next step is how to import this file in the customer 360 application in order to do that there are two ways one is uh, either you can drag and drop or you can browse it go to the new file import And here you can drag that file or you can click the browse and select the file. Once you select the file, it will show us what that file contains. It contains this column which we already seen in the spreadsheet and it also has the data. At the bottom of the screen, you will see the file properties. If there are multiple sheets available in your document you can select a particular sheet where the actual data present if your data spreadsheet contains column names or it contains the title those can be excluded by selecting data import from line so the data will be imported from this line then we have to specify whether we have included a header in the file. If there are specific patterns are followed for the date kind of fields, you have to specify that pattern here. If you are using CSV file, then definitely you need to provide the separator and that is comma. These are the details about the files and you will see the data about all the columns which are present in the spreadsheet. In case you would like to change the file, you can click this change file and select the file again, whatever the file you would like to use. Now the next is we have to click the next button, which is on the top right corner. And this will take us to the mapping section. So here is the artificial intelligence comes into the picture. The newer version of this application comes with artificial intelligence which do two things. First, it determines what is the business entity which is applicable for the given field. Suppose if you include member related properties, then it will detect the business entity as a member. If you include the individual types of column in the spreadsheet, it will determine the individual as a business entity. So it depends on the what kind of fields we are providing. The artificial intelligence determines what kind of business entity will be applicable for this data import. Right now it is just showing one. There is another case of this artificial intelligence and that is nothing but how to determine or how to increase its, its intelligence over the period of time. Assume that on day one, if you try to import this file, it detects three business entities. And out of three business entity, as a manual review, you determine only one business entity is applicable for this kind of data. And you select that and import the data. Next couple of runs, this system builds its own intelligence. So in future, if you import the similar fields, it will just show you only one business entity instead of showing multiple applicable business entity. So that way it, it increases its intelligence over the period of time as well. 
Now, assume that this is acceptable uh, business entity, then click on accept. Once you select the accept or that business entity, it will show us a mapping, a mapping from the source column, which is present in the spreadsheet and the mapping in the target business entity. So this target business entity is nothing but our business entity, which we have configured in the provisioning tool. So which will have the primary key, source key and other business columns such as first name, last name. Here, the green icon tells us that this mapping is automatically determined and it is appropriate as per the, the business intelligence or the artificial intelligence which is introduced in the system. In case you think this column is not correct, then you can just drag and drop the other column. For example, let me show you one thing. Assume that this tier column is not required or this is not correct mapping. Then you can just remove the mapping, go to the tier and drag that field here. When we override any existing mapping, then the icon will change to orange. The green means it's a with a high confidence. The orange icon means it's a manually overridden value. And there is one more color, it's a called a blue color. If there is a conflict and system is not able to determine whether that field is correctly mapped or not, it will have the low confidence and such a low confidence field will be marked with the blue color. Of course, we can review those blue color or blue highlighted fields and if those are correct, then we can proceed. If those are not correct, then we can override such fields as well. So system determine all those fields automatically and one of the field we overrode with our own value. The next thing we can do is we can perform some other action on this mapping. You can click on that gear icon and it, it will tell us what is the mapping name. So this is the mapping, mapping name generated when we try to import this file and this will be stored in the database in the one of the table which is present in CMX ORS schema. If you would like to change the mapping name, you can click on this and you can give your own name as well. You can save this mapping and in going forward, if you want to use the same mapping again for this import, you can click on the use saved mapping. Here, it will show us all saved mapping in the system. If you are run multiple times some of the jobs, it will store in the database and those mappings will be available. You can select it and click OK and that particular mapping will be used for this data import. I'll just click it cancel and let's proceed. I'll click next button. Now the data is OK and in the screen, it will show us option what kind of source you would like to associate with this record. This is one of the interesting feature because in earlier version of the subject area based IDD or customer 360 or entity 360 application, we were not able to use a source system other than admin. But after 10.4, you can use any other source system by selecting this drop down. I'll keep this source system as an admin and we'll see whether there is any relationship data present or not. There is no relationship data present, just only entities. Let's click the import button, which is on the top right corner again. And if the data is correct and if there is no issue in the template or during the mapping, then the data will be imported successfully. Now the process is running, which is our current process, which will take a couple of minutes based on the volume of data you're processing. Now we can see the process is successfully executed. If you notice one thing, we started with a new file import, but when the final stage comes, which is actual processing, it will show under the my jobs. Different types of jobs are maintain here 
such as match result, bulk updates, and file imports. If you're using file import, you will see all the jobs which are executed now and our earlier execution as well. If you would like to see what is the result of this execution, just expand it and it will show us there are two records present in the file. Record persisted are two, that means these are two records inserted in the database and there is no error. If there is error, then the error Excel sheet or the spreadsheet will be created with the record which are failed to process. You can download it and then you can fix those record and re-import. So this way we can import the data using Customer 360 application. There is no additional configuration is required on the MDM side or in the provisioning tool. This feature, the data import template feature comes automatically with the Customer 360 application.